So you like education, healthcare, and law enforcement, but you don't like paying for it? Here's how. Tax evasion for dummies. I'm State Rep Ross Hunter, and I'm chair of the House Finance Committee, and we're going to try and take a bite out of tax evasion this year. So the first thing I want to look at is a great technique. If you want to say you want to build a big building, you had a great set of plans, typically you'd hire a contractor to do the work for you. Contractor would do the work. You'd pay the contractor for the work. Taxes would get paid on that scenario. Now, a new way that people want to do it is they want to create a limited liability corporation. And these are typically called shell corporations. Both players go together and they create a joint venture because they're going to build this building together. The contractor puts in construction service work and the developer puts in land and money. And if both people share in the risk and they both share in the profits, well, that's a legal way to do this. And, and you're really not having to owe sales tax on the services because everybody shares the risk. But if the contractor gets payment as work is done and really doesn't share in the risk of doing the development, then that is a sale of construction services and sales tax ought to be paid. But in this case, they're not paying the tax. The contractor doesn't share the profits. There's little or no risk in the venture. They're just getting paid. This is a scheme. Number two. Here's another great trick on how to avoid paying. This time, it's B&O instead of sales tax. Now, if you're a Washington corporation and you have customers all over the country, normally you provide a service to them. They provide profit back to you. Life is good. You pay the normal business tax on your profits here in Washington. That's a taxable sale. Now, suppose instead, though, you say, wow, Let's hire a lawyer and we'll just make a little shell corporation in Nevada and we'll still provide all those services to customers all over the country. But instead of them having the check go to Washington, we'll just have them send the check to a post office box in Nevada. And the shell corporation that we created will just send us a, a distribution of profits instead of just mailing the checks to us. Now, Typically, all there'd be in Nevada is a post office box, someone who gets the mail, puts it in an envelope, and sends it to Washington. We would only tax the few hundred dollars a month you'd pay someone to mail us the checks. All the services got performed exactly as they were before, but now, all of a sudden, there's no tax due. Technique number three. Here's another great way. Suppose that you make widgets. And you'd like to sell your widgets to somebody. Widgets, in this case, are really expensive. So instead of selling the widget by itself, let's just make that little shell corporation again. And we've got a buyer. And we'll just sell the corporation. And we'll transfer the widget. Every year, we'll transfer a third of it. And then when we're done, we'll dissolve the shell corporation. And essentially, you have transferred that personal property to the buyer. There's no tax due, but there should be. An even better way to do this that's, that's just more fun if you're trying to avoid taxes is suppose you want to sell a house and you've got a buyer. Well, the first thing you want to do is let's create that shell corporation again and we'll move the house into the shell corporation. That's a transfer it's your corporation you can say ah the corporation owns the house not me well here comes the buyer and instead of selling the house to the buyer and paying the real estate excise tax as you would normally as you and i would do if we were to buy a house instead what we're going to do is we're going to sell the house but because that corporation owns the house and you dissolve the corporation right after the sale is done the Department of Revenue is going out and saying, well, wait a minute, where's the real estate excise tax? There's no shell corporation to pay it. The joke's on the Department of Revenue, but there's no real estate excise tax paid. You and I can't do this on selling our house because we don't have good enough lawyers to do it. We ought to not be able to do this. Another trick to avoid paying the real estate excise tax is called binding options. Again, you know, it's we always get these shell corporations, but suppose you, you have 
a corporation that owns this property. Again, we'll, we'll use the same house because we're cheap on clip art. And the buyer in this case has one of these little shell corporations too. And those two corporations create a contract with each other that guarantees that every year we are going to transfer a third of the value of that property. So first year we transfer a third, second year we transfer another third, and in the final year we transfer the last third, but because we didn't transfer 50% plus one in any given year, they complied with the letter of the law, but they didn't pay the real estate excise tax on it. What's with that? And the last technique that we're gonna use in this slideshow, though there are many, many more, is how to avoid paying the sales and use tax. So let's suppose that you just happen to have a shell corporation that's located in Antigua instead of in Washington. And that owns a really beautiful sailboat. And that, if that shell corporation buys the sailboat and the sailboat stays in Antigua, you know what? You really don't owe Washington sales tax because the boat's not here. You didn't bring it in here. You really, that's legit. You don't owe any sales tax. Let's try another example though. Let's say, this time, let's say the Cayman Islands. So you have your shell corporation this time in the Cayman Islands and you own the same boat Again, same legitimate transaction until you bring that boat in. You bring that boat home, you park it at that slip on Lake Washington, maybe it's parked in, in Lake Union. Now, you bring it here, but there's like no owner, there's no place to go after it because we have no way of tracking it because it's owned by the Shell Corporation and the Grand Caymans. There's no way to get after the sales tax. This is tax avoidance. So Washington loses out on about $25 million a year in these clever tax schemes. You and I pay our taxes to support schools, roads, public health, but guess who doesn't? We gotta pass the bill, we gotta close these tax loopholes so that everybody pays their fair share. Thanks.